Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Barbara Stanwyck and Robert Taylor in Smiling Through with H.B. Warner. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we bring you a romance of two generations in a play that I believe will last far beyond our own generation in the American theater. Smiling Through had a long run on Broadway and also has to its credit two hit motion pictures. And the reason is that it's truly a great love story. Of course, it takes two to play at that game, and, and we couldn't think of any stars better suited to the parts than Barbara Stanwyck and Robert Taylor. But as Bobby Burns once observed, the, the best laid schemes are mice and men gang off to glee. In this case, <laughs> our best laid schemes went to glee three specific times during the past several weeks because Barbara had a date with a motion picture camera, or Bob had, or they both had. But we played a waiting game, as this combination of play and stars was well worth waiting for. Smiling Through is really two love stories, because the haunting secret of a romance in the past is the barrier between Kathleen O'Hara and Kenneth Wayne at the time of our play. Barbara Stanwyck is Kathleen O'Hara in the modern day and Munyin Clare in the past generation. Robert Taylor will be heard as Kenneth Wayne and then, going backward in time, as Jerry Wayne. So both our stars do double duty tonight, just as our product, Lux Flakes, does double duty all the time. Clever women have learned that Lux Flakes is both kind to their clothes and easy on the budget. Now we begin the dramatic story of Smiling Through. As our curtain slowly rises on Act One, starring Robert Taylor as Kenneth Wayne and Jerry Wayne, and Barbara Stanwyck as Kathleen O'Hara and Munyin Clare, with H.B. Warner as John Carteret. It's June, 1914, just two short months before the rumble of guns from France will shatter the dreamy quiet of the English countryside. In a pleasant old garden near London, two elderly men are seated beneath the trees, a table before them, on which is set a never-ending game of dominoes. No move has been made for the last ten minutes. With a gesture of impatience, one of the men picks up his cane and wraps it smartly against the legs of the table. John, John, wake up, wake up. What? Oh, my, my play? This is a very exciting game, John, with you going to sleep after every move. Let me see, 12 and 3 are 15 and 5 are 20. And I wasn't asleep, Owen. Oh, then if you weren't asleep, why didn't you play the double six there <laughs> where I expected you to? You and I have been playing this game for 50 years. You ought to know I never do what anybody expects me to. <laughs> Funny how an otherwise upright man can be so low down about <laughs> games. <laughs> Uh, by the way, what time are we expected at Fred's tonight? Half past eight. And I'm not going. Not going? Why? You don't often refuse a chance to play whist. There'll be a moon tonight. A full moon. I never leave here when it's moonlight. Oh, John, are you going to start that? I wonder if you know how I dread to see you in these moods. Moods? Do you mean to say you're going to sit here in this garden all night again and try to conjure up uh, uh, spooks and... Really, John, sometimes you give me the creeps. Do you know what people think? <laughs> they th think I'm a little touched, don't they, Owen? I don't blame them, this, this constant playing with the supernatural. Yeah, there's nothing supernatural about it. It's beautifully natural. The past is dead, John. You ought to forget it. No, 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 you're wrong. You're wrong, Owen. The past is with us. It's here about us all the time. It's merely a question of making some sort of contact with it. I don't believe it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> For a man of science, Doctor, you, you, you have a very small mind. Uh, your move. Uh, where's Kathleen? Hmm? I said, where's Kathleen? Oh, I, I don't know. Off riding with William, I suppose. Over by the Wayne estate? I believe so. 
Hope she's not jumping those fences again. I came, by the way, in the state on my way here, John. Yes? Yes, it'll be quite a job fixing it up after all this time. Place has gone completely to seed. I... Well, what, what, what do you mean, fixing it up? No one's lived there for 50 years. There's someone living there now. Kenneth Wayne. What's that? Kenneth Wayne. Jerry Wayne's son. He, he arrived from America yesterday. Jerry Wayne's son. I thought I'd better tell you, John. Why didn't he stay away? Why did he have to come back here? It's only natural that the boy should want to look after his father's property. You heard that Jerry Wayne had died, I suppose. No, I hadn't. Yeah, in America, three years ago. From all I can understand, his wife never knew that Jerry had been guilty of... Stop it, Owen. Stop it. I, I don't want to hear any more about Jerry Wayne or his wife or his son. It's a subject I finished with 50 years ago. I don't want it reopened. I imagine it may be reopened in spite of you, John. Kenneth Wayne is your neighbor. He'll naturally come here to pay his respects. I won't have it. I won't have him in my house. John, the boy knows nothing of what happened here. And after all, you can't hold him responsible for what his father did. Fifty years is a long time to hold a hatred, John. No, oh, so that's what you meant. The past is dead. Forget it. Yes, John. Well, I can't. I'll never forget it. I want nothing to do with Kenneth Wayne and Kathleen. She'll have nothing to do with him either. Ellen. Ellen. Yes, Mr. Carteret. Ellen, has my niece returned from her ride? No, sir, she oh. hasn't. When she does, tell her I want to see her at once, please. Uh, Kathleen, is this. We've known each other for years, ever since we were children. Oh, I know, Willie. Perhaps that's the trouble. I suppose that means you won't even think about it? Oh, I have thought about it, Willie, but my thoughts keep going around in a circle, and they always come back to the same place. I'm really sorry, Willie, but the answer's still no. Well, I didn't expect anything else, so I'm not disappointed. <laughs> Willie, you're a darling. And if you didn't ask me to marry you at least once every month, I'd miss it horribly. I will say that I'm a sort of solid person, Kathleen. Substantial, if you know what I mean. I won't ever change. Oh, I'm sure of that, Willie, but... Now, I, I think we'd better ride back. Will you give me a hand up? Be careful now, Kathleen. And please don't ride as if the devil were after us. Come on, Willie, I'll race you home. Kathleen, wait! Kathleen! Kathleen, pull up! Pull up, we're going too fast for this ground. Across the Wayne Meadow, Willie. We'll take the gate on the west side. You can't jump that gate. Don't kill yourself. Go around the wall, Kathleen. I'm taking the gate, Willie. See you at home. Kathleen, come back. The top post is up. Go. Kathleen! Whoa, whoa. Kathleen. Kathleen, are you hurt? Oh, I don't... No, I don't think so. Let me see. Oh, no. No, I'm not hurt. Oh, thank heaven, I... Oh. I told you not to take that jump. Well, I... I almost made it. <gasps> you are hurt. Oh. Oh, just my ankle. I... I must have turned it when I fell. Is it very bad? No, only a sprain. I, I think I'll live. Can you walk? Oh, I doubt if I... Oh, no, Willie, I can't. Well, that, that's awkward. Oh. What do we do now? We go home as soon as you can get me there. Well, I'm afraid the horses have run off. Oh, dear. Of course, I... Could carry you, I suppose, but... Oh, could you, Willie? Well, perhaps I'd better get a car, Kathy. Oh, all right. I, I think you'll be more comfortable. I, I won't be long. And don't tell Uncle John. He'll be furious. Oh, I won't. Oh. Oh. Hello. Oh, hello. I thought I heard voices over this way. <sighs> oh, what happened to the other one? You mean the other voice? Yeah. He went home for a car. Oh. Oh. <laughs> It's a grand afternoon, isn't it? Mm, lovely. Nice view from here. Beautiful. Did, did you walk all the way up the hill? No, I came on a horse. A uh, horse? Yes, he went home, too. Oh. Well, <laughs> oh. I didn't mean to poke my nose into your business. Maybe, maybe I'd better go home. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're American, aren't you? Yes, that's right. How'd you know? <laughs> Deduction. I just arrived yesterday. Are you going to be staying in the neighborhood? Well, I hope so. Well, then we ought to know each other. My name's Kathleen O'Hara. Kathleen O'Hara? Irish? Oh, how did you know? <laughs> I live in that house down there, see? Oh, the Carteret place. Yes, he's my uncle. Oh, I was going to drive over there this evening and say hello. I'm not sure it's done that way in England, but I thought I'd plunge in and see what happened. Oh, you won't find us very hard to get along with. Uh, just on the other side of the house is Dr. Harding's, mm -hmm. and uh, this is the old Wayne place here. No one lives here anymore. Oh, yes, someone does. I live here. Huh? Oh, 
Oh, then you're Kenneth Wayne. Yes. Oh, I remember now. I heard you were coming. How do you do, Mr. Wayne? How do you do, Miss O'Hara? Well, since we're going to be next-door neighbors, we must be friends. Yes. Shall we start now? How do you mean? Come up to the house for tea. Well, I'd love to, except for one thing. What's that? I can't walk. You can't? What did you say? I tried to jump your gate over there, and instead I landed over here. I've uh, sprained my ankle. Do you mean to tell me that all the time we've been talking... You... Why didn't you say something? Oh, it's not very bad. Well, here, put your arms up. What for? I'm going to take you home, of course. You mean carry me? <laughs> I'll bet you don't make it. No harm trying. Up you go. I, I think I can walk to the chair. You can put me down now. Oh, no. When I start a job, I finish it. Right here. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll have to give you tea. <laughs> oh, Miss Kathleen... What's happened to you? It's nothing, Ellen. Will you tell Uncle John I'm home? Yes, Miss. And uh, bring some tea, Ellen. Sit down, please. Well, thank you, but don't you think you'd better do something about that ankle? Oh, it's much better, really. I told you I could have walked halfway. <laughs> Kathleen. Kathleen, you all right? Of course, Uncle John. I've sent for Owen. He'll be here right away. Oh, Uncle John, please stop fussing. There's nothing the matter except this gentleman thought he had to carry me home. Oh. How do you do, Mr. Carteret? You're Kenneth Wayne, aren't you? <laughs> yes, sir. I'd know you anywhere. You're just like him. Just... Oh, I, I suppose you mean my father, sir. Yes, I mean your father. Uncle John. Thank you for bringing my niece home. Is there anything we can do for you? No, I... Uncle John, Mr. Wayne is staying for tea. I see. Excuse me. Well, I... I'm dreadfully sorry. There must be some... Oh, well, I, I can't imagine. Oh, it's, it's, it's quite all right. I... Don't pretend to know what it's all about, but, well, I'll run along. Oh, you can't. Please don't. Oh, you really don't want me to stay. Let's not try to be polite. Well, perhaps we'll meet again sometime. Of course we will. Goodbye, then. Goodbye, and thank you. Ellen. Ellen. Yes, miss? Will you ask Uncle John if he can come here a moment? Well, uh, he's in the garden, Miss Kathleen. He said that he, he didn't wish to be disturbed. He'd be there all evening, he said. Oh. You know how he is, miss, when, when there's going to be a moon. It might be better if I didn't... Yes, uh, never mind, Ellen. Long John, for the first time in your life, you're completely in the wrong. I'd rather not talk of it. I came here to talk of it, and you must listen to me. You might as well know that Kathleen has been seeing young Wayne. Against my wishes. Why shouldn't she? You've explained nothing to her. You're being unfair to her and to the boy. Why are you so sympathetic all of a sudden, Owen? Because I've met him, I've spoken to him, and I know he's lonely. People around here can't forget what his father did, but he doesn't know what it's all about. He's proud. He feels it. I'm surprised he's staying here as long as he has. If he feels anything besides arrogance and egotism, he's the first Wayne who ever did. You're blind, John. Your hatred has blinded you to everything. Don't you know that Kathleen's in love with him? Well, that's impossible. She can't be. She is, John. And who are you or I to say her heart isn't telling her what's best? Our lives have jogged along three quarters of their way. Her life is just budding, and the lad's fine. He's the son of the man who was responsible for the greatest sorrow I ever knew. His son. His own son. The, the same stock in this very garden 50 years ago. Why, you were here. You saw her little white face. And you've seen me live on here for 50 years without her. And you dare. You dare to tell me... John, stop it. I don't want you ever to speak of it again, do you hear, Owen? Never. Dr. Harding? Dr. Harding? Uh, yes, Jimmy? Dr. Harding, sir. Uh, they want you in the village. You, you ought to come at once, sir. Uh, who? Uh, where? At the recruiting station, sir. War's been declared. We'd better say good night here. I'll go the rest of the way alone. Again? <laughs> I never quite get past the garden wall, do I? I'm sorry, Ken. I know. But some evening I'm going to climb into that garden of yours. It's, it's becoming an obsession with me, like the seventh door that must never be opened. OK. 
Kathleen, what is it? Why do people hate me so? What have I done? Uh, what haven't I done? I don't know, Ken. If I did, I'd tell you. You must know something. I've been here for three months, and the only people who've even spoken to me are you and Dr. Harding. There must be some reason for that. I know this much, Ken. It's something to do with your father and my Uncle John's sweetheart, my Aunt Munin, years and years ago. Dr. Harding told me, but that's all he'd say. And then, every night when there's a moon like this, Uncle John goes into the garden. He'll stand looking at the gate hour after hour. And then he'll hold out his arms in front of him as if... as if he's waiting for someone. And he'll call her name. Moonin. Moonin. And then? I don't know what happens then. I'm afraid to look. <laughs> you don't believe that someone does come to him. I'm Irish, Ken. We can believe a great deal that we can't see. Well, Kathleen, whatever this thing is that stands between us, will it, will it always be there? I don't know. Well, there must be something we can do. We can go to him and tell him that we love each other. Ken. I've never said that to you before. I never thought I had to. But you've known, haven't you? Yes, I've known. Well, then let me speak to him. Let me tell oh, him. Oh, no, Ken, not yet, please. But why? Why, Kathleen? Because, because he hates you so. And because he loves me. He's done everything for me. When my mother died, I was alone in the world. He sent for me. He's like my father, and... And he's old, and I think, unhappy. Or let me tell him, can at the right time. Will it be soon? Perhaps. It must be soon. I've joined up, Kathleen. Joined up? Yes, I'm waiting for word now. I may leave in the morning to join my regiment. But you're an American. I'm not sure what I am. My father was English. But you don't have to go. They can't make you go. Oh, now, would you want me to hide behind that? Oh, Ken. Ken. That's why it must be soon, darling. It'll be so much easier leaving you if I know that when I come back, you'll, you'll be here. Kathleen. It's Uncle John. Kathleen, is that you out there? No. Oh. Good evening, sir. It's getting late, Kathleen. You coming in? Uncle John, there's, uh, there's something we have to tell you. Tell me inside. Good night, Mr. Wayne. Mr. Carteret, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I should like to stay, if you don't mind. You've made that evident in the past. In spite of the fact that you realize you're not welcome here. Uncle John! Will you go into the garden, please, Kathleen? Well... Mr. Carteret, I don't deserve the treatment I get from you. That's a matter of opinion. You've nursed a prejudice against me that has no foundation. You are a Wayne. That's its foundation. If you'll forgive me, sir, that's unfair. You're holding a grudge against me for some injustice my father did you. Injustice? I don't know the facts, but I did know my father. So did I. I resent that, sir. I'm speaking of a man who's dead. I'd gladly say to his face if he were alive. Mr. Carteret, I'm entitled to stand on my own merits. Because I happen to be the son of a man with whom you disagree... You speak very lightly of the disagreement between your father and me. I've heard vague hints. Now I want to know the facts. Your mother didn't enlighten you before she died? No, sir. Uh, she evidently wished to spare you. It's not fair to disclose a secret. She tried so hard to keep... Just a moment, Mr. Carteret. I joined up last week. I'm leaving for the front tomorrow. I run the same risk as anyone else, and it's quite possible I may not come back. I should like to say goodbye to Catherine. I shall deliver your message. I'd like to see her, please. I'm afraid that's impossible. Mr. Carteret, I love Kathleen, and she loves me. You're going to find it difficult to keep us apart. I shall do my best. Then let me advise you, sir. Don't count on my being killed because I won't be. I'll come back. I promise you that. Kathleen... Are you crying? Kathleen, oh, my child. Do you hate me so? I love you, Uncle John. But I love Ken, too. Kathleen, can't you trust me? I've taken care of you ever since you were a child. Believe me, darling, I'm only trying to take care of you now. Time will heal your heartbreak, Kathleen. Has it healed yours? Aren't you still holding a grudge against Ken's father? Aren't you still cherishing a love that doesn't heal? 
Has time cured your heartbreak? Kathleen, it's time you knew the truth about the man whose son you say you love. Am I disturbing you, John? No, no, no. I'm I'm glad you're here, Owen. I think Kathleen should know what happened in this garden 50 years ago. You were here that night. You can bear me out. Let me tell her at some other time, No, John. no. She must know now. Come here, Kathleen. Sit here, dear, beside me. Curtain falls on Act One of Smilin' Through. In a moment, Mr. DeMille brings you Act Two, starring Barbara Stanwyck, Robert Taylor, and H.B. Warner. And now, a word of thanks to the women of our audience who have given such a warm reception to the product which sponsors tonight's play, New Quick Lux Flakes. You know, it isn't easy to improve a famous product like Lux, which has become such a friend to so many millions of women, but women everywhere are saying that now, Lux is even better than before. That's true, Mr. Roy. Though I used to hear girls say Lux just couldn't be improved. Yes, I'm sure many women have thought that, Sally. Now, here are three points women especially like about new quick Lux. One, these delicate flakes are so fast, they bubble into suds at the touch of water. In water as cool as your hand, new quick Lux dissolves three times as fast as ten other leading soaps tested. That's one point women appreciate. Two. New Quick Lux is so thrifty. A little goes so far. In fact, ounce for ounce, it gives more suds than any of the ten other soaps tested. And that's true even in hard water. The third point... is purity. New Quick Lux has the same perfect gentleness you've always depended on. It hasn't any harmful alkali, no builders or fillers. Anything safe in plain water is safe in new quick lux. Speed, thrift, safety. Those are the three reasons women are so enthusiastic about the new quick lux. It comes in the same familiar box at no extra cost to you. So why not get a big box tomorrow and use it for stockings, under things, and all washables. For dishes, too to save your hands. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Smiling Through, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Kathleen O'Hara and Munin Clare, and Robert Taylor as Kenneth Wayne and Jerry Wayne, with H.B. Warner as John Carteret. <coughs> full round moon shines down on the shadowy figures of John Carteret, Dr. Harding, and Kathleen. Slowly, John Carteret begins his story, his eyes bright again, as they were some 50 years ago. 50 years ago, on the 18th of June, this old house was in a hubbub of excitement. It was a lovely summer night like this. Over the gate yonder, the honeysuckle and roses grew just as they do in the dunes of today. Everything was the same except for some witches' lanterns placed here and there. It was the night Munin, Claire, and I were to be married. She had arrived that day with her sister, Mary, your mother, Kathleen. As the long twilight faded into darkness, the old house was lit by a thousand candles. Snatches of laughter and bits of bantering chatter floated out into the garden. Someone was playing something softly. Liquid on the harp. I could hear it still. It was her little song. Munin's song. The one I taught you to sing so many years ago. There was still an hour before the ceremony. Suddenly there was a ringing at the gate bell. Ellen went quickly to answer it. 
Why, Dr. Harding, it's about time. Good evening, Ellen. Am I late? Mr. Carteret's been worried to death. Is that you, Owen? Uh, good evening, John. Oh, the Lord, I thought you'd never get here. Did you bring the ring? Now, don't worry, don't worry. Everything's all right. Oh, come inside, man. There are a thousand things to do attend to yet. John, I've something to tell you. Oh, what, Owen, what? I stopped in at the George and Dragon on my way here uh, to get something to steady my nerves. Well, well, well. Jerry Wayne was there, John, drinking more than was good for him and talking about her. Morning. He was talking about Munyin. Now, John, there's nothing you can do about it, only I, I think you ought to be on your guard. He's not been asked to the wedding, of course. Of course not. I'm wondering if that was wise. Oh, I know how you feel about him. No man has the right to make threats merely because he's refused by a woman. But Wayne's a strange, bitter nature. At any rate, he was making some vague threats that there was still time and the wedding wasn't over yet. You have nothing to worry about, Owen. That kind of man usually takes it out in talking. Come inside. Helen, the bell. Coming. Who is it? Oh, oh, Mr. Wayne. I, I thought it was... A guest, Ellen? <laughs> no, just a visitor. Who is it you want, sir? We're very busy just now. First, I want to come in. Uh, I don't think you're expected, Mr. Wayne. I know that. No place for the rejected suitor amidst the wedding guests, is there? His great crime was that he loved the lady and the lady didn't love him. You've been drinking, Mr. Wayne. I do hope you'll go quietly away and not make any disturbance. Tonight of all nights. Take this note to Miss Munyin. I'll wait. Miss Munyin is dressing, and I don't think she wants to hear from you. Do as I tell you. No, sir. I will not. I want that message taken to her before the wedding. Understand? Ellen. Ellen, Mr. Carteret wants you. Oh, Miss Mary. Ellen, what is it? What's the matter? It's Mr. Wayne, Miss Mary. Oh. My respects, Miss Mary. Will you have the goodness to deliver this note to your sister? Jerry Wayne, you had no right to come here. It's not Munyin's fault at all if she doesn't love you. Oh, why can't you take your dismissal like a man and not come round to trouble her on the most wonderful night of her life? If you'll take her that note and let me wait for an answer, I'll go quietly. If not, I'll stay and watch the wedding like a welcome guest. Only I don't vouch for what I'll say or do. Now, will you take the note or won't you? I, I'll take it. But I don't like this, Mr. Wayne. I don't like your being here. I'll go when I receive an answer to my note. Wait here, then, please. Jerry? Jerry, where are you, Jerry? Munin, I'm here. Ah, Jerry, it was nice of you to come around. I knew you'd never let me get married without wishing me well. Munin, you're so lovely. You're so beautiful. Oh, my darling. Jerry, don't. You're not going to marry him. It isn't true. Tell me it isn't true. Oh, now you mustn't begin this all over again, Jerry. I won't let you. I have as much to offer as he has. I was a fool to give you up without a fight, but it's not too late. You must come away with me now, now, Mooney, tonight. Jerry. Oh, don't look at me like that, as if you hated me. I love you. It's killing me. I can't stand it. Oh, Mooney, I know I'm behaving like a crazy man, and that's what I am, crazy with love and jealousy. The thought of you belonging to another man drives me mad. I, I don't know myself. I can't think. I must stop it somehow. He won't have you, not if I can prevent it. Jerry, how much do you love me? More than all the world. More than life itself. I can't give you up to him. Then listen to me. Do you know what you're going to do to prove your love for me? You're going to leave me now, bravely and wishing me joy. And you're going to go along home and let me be married to the man I love. Because you love me. I, I can't. You can. You will. Look at me, Jerry. Look at me and tell me that you want me to be happy. Even though it means... Unhappiness for you. I can bear it when I'm with you, Munin. It's, it's when I'm alone. Ah, when you're alone, say over and over to yourself, I'm doing it for her. Then it'll come out all right. Will you try? Yes, Munin. Thank you, Jerry. Sure, it's a dog's life I'd be leading you, Jerry, not loving you. You don't deserve that. Now, now, you must go. You promised that if I came down... Munin... Shall I never see you again? Often, I hope, when I come back here to live. If you'll promise to remember what I say. Now, wish me well, Jerry. And me in it. Goodbye, Moonin. I love you. I shall always love you. Ah, Jerry. Goodbye, my dear. Is 
everything ready. Mary, where's John? Have you seen him? Why, you're the best man, Owen. He's your responsibility. John! John! Where are you? John! Ah, they're calling you, John. We'd better go in. In a moment. I'm not supposed to see you till the ceremony. Didn't you know that? It's the very worst of bad luck. Oh, I, I've heard rumors of this nonsense, Munin. Is it really true? Do you know when I came out here before and saw you? When you turned around to me with the moonlit all silver in your hair? You looked like a little white ghost coming down on a moonbeam to greet me. I'm not a ghost, John. I'm real. But I love you till I am one. And after. Nothing shall ever part us, Munin. Promise me. Not even death itself. Because if, if I should die and leave you, John, I'd be so lonely for you, I'd come back to you. You'd never be without me for a single minute. Munin... John, what was that, the gift? Who's there? Who is it? Jerry. Yes, it's Jerry. I've come to wish you well, John. Jerry, you promised you'd go away. But I didn't. Go into the house, Munin. I want to talk to him. Jerry, wait. You can't... Get her away. Go in, Munin. I won't leave you. Please. Not till I know what he wants. If you've come here to create a scene at the wedding... There isn't going to be any wedding. Threats like that won't do you any good. I'll settle with you afterwards. Now leave the place. You'll settle with me now. I wasn't able to keep you from winning her, but I can keep you from marrying her. John, he has a gun. Get back, Monier. No! No! Oh! Oh, John. Monier. Monier. Oh, my darling. My darling. It hurts. I never meant that. I didn't mean to. I never meant that. I swear it. I never meant it. I never meant it. John, what is it? He's killed her. He's killed her. The doctor, quick. I want Owen. Send somebody after him and, and Wayne. Head Wayne off. He mustn't get away. John. Oh. Oh, my darling. Try with all your strength to help me save you. Owen will be here. Ah, uh, too late. I know. It's a pity, isn't it? It's only a wound. Owen will know what to do, darling. John, I said not even death itself. It's funny when you think of it. Like a warning. Munin. Munin, don't leave me. I never fear. Love like this can't die. I'll find a way to come back. Just you wait and see. No. No. Munin. John, I, I love you. That's all that comes. Oh, please. Don't be sad. And, John. Yes? I. I've always been such a being creature, and. and I. I can't help thinking what a charming ghost I shall be. Listen, John, do you remember my song? There's a little green gate at whose trellis I wait, while two eyes so true come smiling through. I'll be there, waiting, just at the end of the road. Money in. Money in. The way she died, in my arms, here in here in this garden, 50 years ago. Love like that, Kathleen, is like the smile of God. And when it's taken from you, it's, it's as though the smile of God had ceased for you forever. But year after year, she has come to me. Sometimes every moonlight night, 
sometimes with long, lonely times between, but always, when I needed her, she was beside me. Whenever I met with trouble or sickness, she was there, and the comfort of it was so great that it made little difference whether I lived one year after her or a hundred, if only she was with me now and then. Uncle John, if you've known love like that through the years and after the years, how is it you can be so hard on me? I love too, Uncle John. Can't you understand? You're the stock of my Munin herself, and his is the blood of the wains, and you don't belong to Catherine. I love him. You must forget him and make an end of this. Now, don't ask me that. I can't. You must. Uncle John, you, you talk of love being like the smile of God. You're not the only one God smiles upon. He smiled on me, too, and on Ken. And I'm not going to let you come between us. You can. Kathleen, where are you going? I'm going to Ken. Kathleen. Kathleen. John, let her go. It's her right. You're against me still. After all that I recalled of what happened that night, you're against me still. All that was 50 years ago. He's his son. That's not the boy's fault. And Kathleen's her flesh and blood. That's not Kathleen's fault. They love each other. You're hard and cruel, John, and I'm against you. You're doing a wicked thing, and someday you'll bitterly regret it. Good night. Monyin. Monyin. Why don't you come to me? I need you, Monyin. I'm here, my darling. But you'll never be able to see me while you've hid in your heart. It breaks the spell. And tis so light and slender a thing. I know you want me. But you'll have to sweep out all the cobwebs of revenge and hatred from your thoughts before we two can talk together. Love of me is not enough. There must be no dark shadows of unkindness or of anger. Love must shine all around. Goodbye, John. Goodbye, my darling. After a brief intermission, Robert Taylor, Barbara Stanwyck, and H.B. Warner will return in Act Three of Smiling Through. Meantime, I'd like Lou Silvers to play a few bars of music. Thank you, Lou. Ah, that lovely theme always says spring, doesn't it? And spring to a housewife often means... Spring house cleaning. Aha, go to the head of the class, Sally. And spring house cleaning should remind women of... New quick blocks. Yes, because it can be a maid of all work to you at this time. To give you an idea of all the things you can do with new quick blocks, we've worked out a special alphabet for washables. Come on, Sally, give us your Lux ABCs. Okay. A is for Afghans. Lux keeps them so cozy. B is for blankets. Blue, green, or rosy. C is for china and curtains. I'm meaning you save a lot when you give them Lux cleaning. Good poetry and good sense, too, Sally. D is for draperies, and keep this in mind. To color and fabrics, new quick Lux is kind. E for embroideries, your linens and such. F is for furniture. Dirt flies at the touch of those rich quick suds that help you so much. And, uh, um, uh... Well, G, H, and I come next, Sally. Or used to when I learned the alphabet. Oh, yes. Glasses, hairbrushes, ice boxes, and keys. The keys of pianos Lux cares for with ease. How about J, Sally? Oh, jewelry, of course. Lux leaves it so bright. And K for the kitchen, all shining in white. L is for lampshades, the washable kind. I'll interrupt here. I hope you don't mind. Ladies, these are just a few of the many ways you can use new quick Lux in your spring house cleaning. It's so easy to use, so fast. And a little goes so far... It's thrifty. Don't forget, it's wonderfully gentle, too. That's right. New Quick Lux has no harmful alkali to hurt anything safe in water alone. 
Why not use it for all your soap and water tasks? To save cleaning bills, to save fabrics, to save your hands. It's in the same familiar Lux box, and it doesn't cost a cent more. Right now, many dealers are featuring it in their spring house cleaning sales. So don't miss this chance to stock up. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on Act Three of Smiling Through. More than four years have passed. It's June again, June 1919. Once more, there's peace in the world. But in Kathleen's heart, only misery and despair. For six months, she's had no word of Kenneth Wayne. Every morning, she waits for the postman at the garden gate. Every morning, he passes the time of day with her, but leaves no letter. Now in the garden, Willie Ainley has come to call. Kathleen, are you expecting someone? No, why, Willie? You've been standing by the gate all morning. Oh, I'm sorry, Willie. Do you know, I find you changed, Kathleen. I noticed it the minute I got back. Changed how? Oh, every way, except one. You're no nearer accepting me than you were before. Are you? Willie, if you ask me to marry you again today, I shall... Oh, Willie. I know. You'll slap me. (laughs) Well, that'd be something. I'd rather be slapped by you than any girl I know. Shall I change the subject? Please. Very well. Oh, uh, by the way, who do you suppose I saw before I came down from London? I can't imagine who. Kenneth Wayne. Ken Wayne? Oh, did you? (laughs) I must say, he wasn't very anxious to speak to me. I had to call him twice before he turned around. How, um... How long ago was this, Willie? Well, let's see. I came down the first... About the middle of May sometime. Then he's... He's been in England over a month. Mm, at least. Why do you ask? I was just curious. Kathleen, I shouldn't have mentioned this, but... I have to know. You're in love with him, aren't you? Sorry, Kathleen. You needn't be. Has he written to you? No. Not for months before the armistice. Oh, Kathleen. Willie, don't pity me. I don't want pity. Forgive me, Kathleen. Would you... Would you rather I go? Thank you, Willie. Of course. Bye, Kathleen. Ken. Oh, Ken. I think that's enough. Put your jacket on, Captain Wayne. Thank you. Well, Doctor, what's the verdict? Oh, it's just about what you told me yourself. The army surgeon did rather a good job on that leg. You mean as good as could be done, huh? Yes, that's about it. Of course, your nerves are all shot, but time will take care of that. How much time? Can't say. That will depend on you, Captain Wayne. (laughs) Yes, I know. Don't worry. Try to relax. Eat plenty of greens. Sleep ten hours a night. Yes, it's easy to prescribe. How much sleep do you get a night? What do you think? About three. If I'm lucky. Well, I could give you something for that, of course. I've had it. Every doctor in London has given me something. (laughs) It's getting so it doesn't work anymore. How long were you at the front? I saw most of the show. I got this leg in last month. Yes. There are a great many like you, Captain. See them every day. I might as well tell you there's very little I can do for them. There's only one thing I really want to know, Doctor. When, when I came back out of this, I was going to be married. Is that... Do you think I should? You mean, is it fair to the girl? I'll be an invalid, won't I? For a time. But you won't say how long. I can't. Maybe years. Maybe all of my life. There's a future to offer a girl, isn't it? To spend the rest of her days waiting on an invalid? Uh, I'm sorry. Well, thank you, Doctor. You've been very kind. Mr. 
Wayne. No. Thank you, Jane. It's good to have you back, sir. I was worried when we didn't hear from you. I'm <laughs> sorry. I should have let you know. Did you uh, send my note to Mr. Carteret? Yes, sir. Good. That's all, Jane? Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, don't unpack my things. I'm not staying. Not staying, sir? I'm leaving for America tonight. But, Mr. Wayne, you've only just come. Will you answer that, please, Jane? Yes, sir. Mr. Carteret. Come in, sir. Mr. Wayne's in the drawing room. Come in, Mr. Carteret. Note. Well, it was kind of you to come. I'd rather come here than have you come to the house. Yes, I'm sure of that. However, what I have to say won't take very long. You can save your breath. You'll never marry, Captain. That's why I came back. To tell you that I'll never marry you. To tell me? I'm not going to see her. So, if you'll explain things to her, I'm sure you can. It might be better all around. I don't understand you. I want you to speak to her. Make her understand that I... I have nothing to compensate for all she'd lose. I suppose she insisted on seeing you anyway. Well, then tell her that I'm not the same man who left here four years ago. That war makes changes in a man's viewpoint it has in mine. Tell her that I, I don't feel as I did. She'll believe it from you. And you no longer wish to marry her? I have no right to marry her. Can't you see that? Look at me. Do you understand now? I see that you've suffered. We all have. You've been wounded. But I'm afraid that would make no difference to Kathleen. It wouldn't matter to her. It must matter. I've done a lot of thinking these past four years, especially since I was put out of the running. I'm glad that you refused to let Kathleen marry me. I'd only be a burden now. That possibility had nothing to do with my refusal. I, I know. But sometimes a mistaken motive works for good in the end. I'm not, I'm not blaming you for your refusal, not anymore. You'd be something more than human if you could forget what my, my father did. You know? Yes, I know. Dr. Harding told me the whole story, and so it's better as it is. She'll realize that, too, someday. Ken? Ken, where are you? Ken? Oh, Ken, darling, I heard you were here. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, Ken! Kathleen, it's all right. Would you mind leaving us, Mr. Carteret? Kathleen. Oh, darling, darling, I didn't believe it. I couldn't. You're back, and you're alive. Oh, let me look at you. If I could stop crying for a minute, I could see you better. <laughs> Not much to look at, I'm afraid. But you've come back. Aren't you glad to see me? You haven't said so. Yes, yeah, of course oh, I Oh, it's am. been so long, darling, and when I didn't hear from you, I thought that... Oh, Ken, forgive me. Well, I was going to write to you, but when I got up to London, everything seemed to break at once. I was pretty busy. Oh, of course you were. Then I thought I'd come down, make a few last-minute arrangements. About what? Oh, the house, and... You see, I'm selling it. Selling this place? Why, Ken? <laughs> now, Kathleen, please try to understand. I shouldn't have come back at all. I was hoping that... Well, I thought when you didn't hear from me, you'd know. Ken, what is it? Look at me. Are you telling me that you... that you don't love me? Is that it, Ken? Well, it's a fine spectacle I've made of myself, isn't it? Waiting here and... Yes, you're right. I, I should have known. But I guess I'm too conceited. You'll have to forgive me, Ken. I, I didn't mean to throw myself at your head. It's just that... Oh, it's so silly, so stupid. Kathleen. Kathleen. Oh. Kathleen, my dear... Oh, Uncle John, I've been such a fool. Don't, Captain. Don't, my darling. He doesn't want me. Uncle John, why didn't you let us alone? He wanted me once, and you took him away from me, just as surely as Jerry Wayne took away your Moonyin Claire. And my heart's just as bitter and just as lonely. Captain, do you think I haven't suffered for it? She hasn't come to me, not once since that night. She'll never come to you again. Never. And then you'll know how I feel now. Do you love him that much? I've never loved anyone so much. I never will. Kathleen, go back to him. Tell him... Oh, how can you say that now? Go back in the house. I've been so wrong, my darling. 
He loves you, too. And he needs you so. Uncle John. He's sick. He's been hurt. That's why he pretended he'd forgotten you. He was trying to give you up, Kathleen. Then it... It isn't true. He, he really wants me. Go to him, my dear. Ken. Oh, I, I thought you'd gone. Let me look at you, darling. Let me see you now. Oh, why didn't you tell me, darling? Kathleen. Did you think it would matter to me? Did you think that my love was so small that, that I wouldn't want to care for you and make you well again? Oh, why did you send me away, darling? Kathleen, I, I may never be well. There's no telling. Oh, but you love me. You do love me. Tell me that, Ken. Kathleen, don't make me say it. Don't you know what it means to be tied to me all your life? No gaiety, no real happiness? Is any love strong enough for that? Mine is. Even stronger. And my love will make you well again. Kathleen. Kathleen. Oh, my darling. My darling. Monyen. Monyen. Why don't you come to me? I've waited so many nights here in the garden. Monyen. John. John, dear. You're here. Oh, you've come at last. Monyen. I've been here all the time. Only you couldn't see me because you've been so obstinate, darling. Keeping those two children apart. You won't... You won't go away anymore? Now that I've made it right? Never. Why? Why, you're... You're in your wedding dress. Yes. Just as you were that night. And as beautiful, as fresh, as... As young as... As if 50 years were only a day. But I... I'm old. I'm old. I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. How, how could you bear to look at me? I'm old. My face is all lined. I see no lines. My hair is white. Why, it's as brown as it ever was. I'm bent. I'm bent and feeble. No. You see me like that? I see you like that. It's a miracle. It's love. You've never let me ask. But tell me now, when shall we be together? Always? Look there, John. Do you see that old man there in the chair? Do you know him? Why? Why it? Yes. But, but uh, how can, how can I be there and... Monyen, is this, is this what they call dying? Yes. Isn't it glorious? And isn't it stupid to be afraid of it? Why, who's afraid? Ah, uh, some poor dears are. But they'd go smiling through the years. If they knew what they'd find at the end of the road. Come, John. Come, my darling. The curtain falls on Act Three of Smiling Through. Before our stars come back for their curtain calls, I'd like to speak to a special group of girls. There are nearly a million and a half of these girls all over the country, and something very special has happened, or is going to happen to them, during 1940. Do you know what it is? They'll be married this year, and many will begin right away keeping house and washing dishes. 
Now, no bride wants her hands to grow rough and red and unattractive, and they needn't. With new Quick Lux, even busy hands can stay soft and smooth and lovable. These gentle flakes are so kind to hands. Yes, indeed, this has been proved by hundreds of women in a most unusual kind of test, a one-hand test. Each woman put one hand in Lux Suds, the other in Suds from a different soap. Now, that's absolutely fair, isn't it? And conditions were similar to home dishwashing. For instance, each woman did the test for 20 minutes, three times a day, average dishwashing time. Altogether, five leading soaps, including Lux, were tested. Well, sir, the results were amazing. Oh, Sally, will you read what Mrs. Edna Tessel of Brooklyn said about her results? I have always used Lux for my own dishes and know how very gentle it is. But I didn't realize what a difference there was between new quick Lux and the other soap I tested. After 19 days of the test, my Lux hand still looked smooth and white. My other hand was so red and rough that I was really embarrassed to have people see it. Yes, the scientists conducting these tests reported they proved Lux milder than any of the other soaps tested. Proved it kindest to hands. Now, one reason New Quick Lux is so kind to your hands is that it contains absolutely no harmful alkali. I wish you'd give it your own private test in your own dishpan. Try it for a week, and I don't think you will ever change. Your grocer has New Quick Lux in the same familiar box at no extra cost. Now, Mr. DeMille is bringing our stars to the microphone. Although Barbara Stanwyck and Robert Taylor are neither of them strangers here, tonight they're taking their first curtain call together on our stage. Thank you, C.B. Barbara and I have been looking forward to doing this play for quite a while. Smiling through has always been a favorite of mine, Mr. DeMille, and with... And with Bob Taylor at the same microphone, it was a perfect performance for all of us. <laughs> you know, I, I hate to bring in a note of complaint, C.B., but I happen to be a committee of one. Oh, nothing to do with the play. It's, oh. uh... Well, Bob, tell him. Yes, you can't turn my hair any grayer. <laughs> it's about your attendance at the Hollywood ballpark since the season opened. The directors are complaining. Don't you like baseball anymore? It's my, it's, it, it, it's still my principal vice, Bob, but I haven't had time to indulge it lately. There's a play a week to produce in the Lux Radio Theater. And over at Paramount, the little matter of a motion picture called Northwest Mounted Police. I don't call it little. I saw 500 Indians the other day. 500 <laughs> Indians? Well, bring them along. <laughs> I'd like to, Bob, but I don't believe the umpires would appreciate well, it. Well, in the meantime, keep your fingers crossed for the rest of us stockholders. We may have a pennant winner in the Hollywood stars, we hope. But to get back to the Lux Radio Theater, what's the play next week? Next Monday night, we're going to present another Pulitzer Prize winner and Broadway hit. Thornton Wilder's play, Our Town. Saul Lesser has just given this play a fine motion picture production to be released within a few weeks. But next week, we'll do it with the original cast of the picture before you see it on the screen. And here are the stars we'll have. William Holden, Martha Scott, Faye Bainter, Beulah Bondi, Thomas Mitchell, Guy Kibbe, Stuart Irwin, and in the famous role he created on the stage, Frank Craven. Our town has something of the story of your town and every town in America. Headed by a cast of eight stars from the picture, we'll bring you this stirring human drama next Monday night. And next Monday night, we'll be listening at home, C.B. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. We're starting right now to find you to another play. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents William Holden, Martha Scott, Faye Bainter, Beulah Bondi, Thomas Mitchell, Guy Kibbe, Stuart Irwin, and Frank Craven, the original motion picture cast in our town. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Heard in tonight's play were Eric Snowden as Dr. Owen, Frank Martin as Willie Ainley, Julie Bannon as Mary, Lou Merrill as Doctor, Justina Wayne as Jane, and James Eagles as Jimmy. Robert Taylor stars in the MGM picture Waterloo Bridge, soon to be released. Barbara Stanwyck's current picture is Paramount's Remember the Night. The play Smilin' Through was written by Jane Cowell and Jane Murphy. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>